Hello! Welcome back to my channel. I'm Courtney and I hope you're doing so very well. Well guys, I think it's time that you and I sit down and have a chat. Um, if you've been following along with the sewing book uh, series and you've got your book and you're all ready to go and you feel like you've come and hit a wall. Now I know in the Facebook group, there are links down below if you want to join the Little Inkers Facebook group, there are quite a number of you that feel that if I haven't done a video on it, you can't progress any further. And I think that it's time we have a creative pep talk. This book is a no stress, no lose art journal. This book is a way for you to explore, to experiment, to release creative energy, to get excited, to play. And don't feel like if I haven't done a video, you can't work in this journal because that is an excuse. Now, I love this sewing book. Let me get that out of the way because it's massive. And I'm going to chat to you guys while I play in my sewing book because there is no right or wrong way to play in this book. And I want you guys to understand that there will come a time when I stop making videos for this series. I will give you guys um, pointers and I will give you guys inspiration and miniature projects so that you can go along your merry way and just have fun. And I know that there's so many women that have got their books and they're just so scared of working in them. And that makes me a little bit upset because that was not my intention for this series. For this series, it was just to have fun and to create a sewing book, another one, and enjoy the process all over again. So I am going to do my very best to help you guys not feel scared about this book because there, this is a no fear book. Nothing should make you feel inadequate, especially this sewing book. And every time I read a comment going, I don't know what to do, I don't know where to go. My, my answer is go wherever your heart wants you to go. This book is a intuitive book. If you want to one day draw um, a bus in your sewing book, draw a bus. And if you want to collage in your sewing book, collage. There, like I said, there is, there is no wrong, right, up, down, all around for this book. And I just thought that I would tell you guys this because I know that so many people in the group are having like small heart attacks almost daily. And it was worrying me and I'm like, this, this is not, this is not what I, I, I wanted for you guys. I wanted you to be excited, to want to explore, to um, have a blast creating something different. And I know that a lot of people are just bounding ahead and that's what I'm excited about. I'm excited to see people just take it head on and that is what it's all about. I mean, we're going to cover photographs, we're going to cover tip-ins, um, we're going to cover ooh, a whole range of things, but at the same time, there will be journal, like art journal with me videos coming where I just work in my journal, in this sewing book, and you can get yours out and work with me. But I'm not going to do, this is how you do this, this is how you do that. I'm going to give you little lessons on components of this book. And then you can take those components and use them in your own book. Or you can use them in your Midori's, anything like that. It is not limited to this sewing book. The things that I'll show you, like altering photographs and incorporating them into your work, or... Um, using color in different ways. It's, this is not limited to just this book. You can take these miniature lessons and apply them to any journal that you have. And I just, 
I just wanted you guys to stop stressing because I never intended for this journal to be this way. I intended it to be a fun and explore, exploratory book. And for some of you, this is your first art journal and that's really exciting. And I just want you guys to have fun with it. If you want to draw, if you're learning to draw, learn to draw on the pages of this journal. Not every page is going to look amazing. Believe me, there are some pages in my old journal that are, are friggin' hideous. And I'm okay with that because it was a step in my journey and it was something that, you know, was um, needed or necessary or something that I needed to get out of my system. Sorry, I'm moving around grabbing things as I work. And I just, I think you guys, I have just dropped a stack <laughs> of papers on my floor. So I will be back. Okay, now that I've cleaned up the giant mess that I just made, I have here a photograph that I printed out for one of my Patreon videos and I never used it. So I'm going to play around with this shot while I still give you guys the creative pep talk because I think some of you really need it. Now, this whole artistic journey is not a race. Um, and when I first started, I used to think I need to do it all and I need to do it now. And I can promise you that that is just going to, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm getting a cold. <laughs> um, so I, I think you guys really just need to just relax and have fun and just enjoy the process of this book. Because my sewing book, my old one, took me well over a year to complete. And I think this one will probably take me longer due to the fact that I'm also working in my Giramondo, which is my journal, my journal journal. I didn't have um, a journal like that going when I was working with my, my last sewing book. I had to, like dedicated all of my um, efforts to that one journal and, and that's where all my creativeness went. But this time around, I am also using my Giramondo and I journal in that almost daily. So my sewing book is not getting as much attention as it normally would. And I think you guys are going to have the same sort of issues because I know that a lot of you have normal Midori's and bullet journals and all those all those different things that are calling to you and um, your sewing book is not going to be it's not going to be everything and that's okay because this will always wait for you it will always be there when you're ready to do you might not pick up this journal for months months at a time and that's okay too because it's 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 a journey it's progress it's slow progress and you don't need to fill up all the pages at once believe me I certainly won't be because I have other other things that I have going in the background and this sewing book is just one of them and I am just one little artist and it takes me forever to do anything because I have perfectionitis so if something I feel isn't perfect, I will do it over and over and over and over again until I get to where I want it to be. So I'm just basically um, cutting up my photographs and I highly recommend that you're not afraid to do the same. I know that to some people photographs are very, very special, but to me they are tools and they, um, they're like uh, little collage elements. So this was just a picture I took one evening on one of our family walks of the, I really adore pictures of sky and like peak, peaking of trees, like little trees peeking out. It's one of my favorite things to take photos of. And it also looks really nice when you want to um, turn them into something different and quirky. And I think that's what I want 
to do today while I'm talking to you. You can also follow along and do exactly what I'm doing if you feel that this would be something you'd enjoy. So I've just sort of made some basic little shapes here and I'm going to find my glue stick because my I've run out of double sided tape and I haven't gone to grab more but I will probably um, double sided tape these down because sometimes my glue is not is not of a great quality so I'm gonna put those there I might move that up a bit because I'm gonna grab some stamps in a minute because I have some body part stamps that I really love and I'll put those down there. So this is a great way, even though this is not the photo lesson, because you'll know when I'm actually doing a proper lesson, it'll all be filmed beautifully and it'll all be step by step and stuff like that. But this is just me playing. And I wanted to show you that this process is so laid back and so like stress free guys, stress free. And there's a few of you in the group that are like, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. You just do what you want. There's no right or wrong in this sewing book. There are so many pages that if you do mess up, you're probably only going to see that page once every now and again. Because there are so many pages in here. And I can show you some of my failures in my other book. Um, but at, at the same time, I don't consider them failures because... 90% of the time, my most unpretty pages are when I'm learning something new. When you're learning something new, it's not going to look like you've done it a thousand times. When you see me draw something, like a Nook Dweller or um, my journal with me's, I have been doing this a very long time. And um, Romini and I always say, don't compare my chapter 50 to your chapter 1. And I think that is comparison is the stealer of joy. I think that is very, very true. As soon as you start comparing yourself to someone or thinking, oh my God, they're doing better than I am and look at their work and I'll never be as good as that, you've lost. And I don't want you guys to lose. I don't want you guys to feel like you've lost anything. We are all on a creative path. Our paths are just at different stages. And that's that's the the beauty of being artists and creators. We're always learning. We're never going to get to a stage where you're like, yep, I'm done. I can't get any better than this. And I think that is such an important thing to remember that when things are not pretty and not perfect, it is because you are learning something new. And I hope that I have many, many ugly pages to come because that means that I am learning new things that I can then work on and practice and get better at and then eventually show you guys. So if I run out of things to learn and run out of things to work on and run out of things to do, my channel will cease to exist because I can't teach anything if I don't learn anything new. So I don't want that and I know you guys don't want that. So embrace the ugly because it means that you are learning new things and learning new things is what life's all about. So I'm going to pause here, I'm going to go grab my stamps and I'll be back in two seconds. Okay, as you can see I've got a um, heap of stamps on my book and these I bought years and years and years ago, probably before I even had Lily. And they are um, Tisha Moore stamps and she is one of my very favourite artists. And if you haven't heard of her or checked her out, go and look her up. She is so, so talented and quirky and left of center. And so mum and I um, went halves on some stamps. So we bought quite a few of her stamps from her store. And so I, as you can see, I love the body parts. They're so cool. So I'm going to stamp some of the body parts onto some... Uh, white sheet of card and then I'm going to cut them out as collage elements. I was going to stamp straight into the book but I think I want to make them sort of patchworky um, and look a bit different so I'm going to do that now and hopefully um, I need to rubber mount them like I need to put some um, 
not rubber mount, like stamping back, uh, stamp foam backing on them. And I've been like so lazy. I've had these for so long and I've never done that. So what I do to try and avoid that, this is a lazy girl tip, is I just put um, double sided tape on the backs of them so that they stay on my acrylic block. And it's probably not the best idea, um, but it works in a pinch and I do not have the time to go and order some foam backing because I don't have any and otherwise I would probably do that so we're just going to double-sided tape these and some of them have already got double-sided tape on them because I've used them quite a bit as you can see these are my favorites and I've used them all throughout my journals over the years and they just never seem to get old I'm always using them and that's what I think a good stamp is something that you can use in a variety of ways um, so I'm going to ink these up with my archival ink from Ranger which I'm really enjoying um, I mentioned this to my patreon girls this is probably the ink that I'm going to rebuy I was using stays on but I really I really like this one so I'm going to get my stuff together and get my book out of the way so I can stamp on a uh, softer surface and you'll see that in fast forward because you stamping is straightforward so I'm gonna do that right for you now getting clear precise images and the double-sided tape method may not be up your alley as you can see if I don't put pressure on all the stamp at the right time some of the image doesn't come out but I'm okay with it because it adds to the look so but if you've got a problem with that don't do the double-sided tape method here I've run out of double-sided tape so a little bit of looped washi also does the trick so you can tell that my ghettoness is strong in this video Okay, so I have cut out all the bits and pieces that I wanted and I roughly cut them. I didn't cut them, like fussy cut them because I don't have time for that today. So I've pulled up my little bodies a bit to adhere the um, body parts underneath so it looks a little bit more not just like I like because it's not dark dark ink and this is quite dark I've just popped them under and I'm going to um, I got carried away I was sitting here cutting them out then I started piecing it all together because that's what happens when I get excited about something I get carried away forgot to hit record so I pulled everything apart so um, we're just going to glue down the body parts. Now, obviously not everyone is going to have these stamps, but there is no reason why you can't go trolling through magazines. And if you want to do something similar to this in your journal, um, you can definitely replicate this with not much um, supplies. You can go trawling for body parts and magazines. It's one of my favorite things to do. Um, so there is that and I think I had, yep, so this is another one of the arms. I must have an opposite arm somewhere, I just, I mu it might have been misplaced because I could not work out where my other arm had gone, um, from this set because I have like several different arms and several different legs and things. And I want to put that one pointing over there. 
But yes, magazines are your best friend and you can cut people's legs out. Fashion magazines are great for that sort of thing. There's some quirky fashion out there that would look amazing um, with this technique. That one there. So you can see that I'm not, I haven't really done anything amazing, but I'm just putting together, I like to create creatures, whether it's drawing them, whether it's collaging them. I really enjoy that part of this process. I like creating things that don't exist because then I can't get them wrong because they exist in my head. So I'm playing around with some of my Patreon collage sheets. Um, if you're a Patreon girl, you've already seen these and I've printed them out. So I'm thinking, I've also got some Tisha Moore collage sheets. I subscribe to Tisha's, Tisha Moore's Artstronauts group and once a week she puts up collage sheets of her own and like hers are so cool and quirky and weird. So I am looking, I'm, I'm going to cut this one out just to see what it looks like because sometimes it's nice um, to have someone else's work in my journal besides my own. So I know how you guys feel using my collage sheets um, by putting them into your journal. I feel the same way with other people's work. Sometimes I get sick of seeing my own stuff. And it's nice to see other people's work. So this might look terrible and, and I might be way off on how it looks, but we'll see. We'll see. Her head might be way too big, but then again, it might be awesome. See, it could be awesome. Mm, I'll put that there as a maybe. So I'm going to trial a few faces and see which ones I like. Nothing is set in stone with the sewing book. It is such a stress-free get your hands messy and and just trial things like nothing is right nothing is wrong I feel like I'm repeating myself I probably am and you're probably all nodding going yes you are repeating yourself but I just want you guys to enjoy making something from nothing and I uh, like if you want to put your like to-do list in your sewing book by all means put your to-do list in there see that looks cool too hmm I have a, uh, my little guy goat deer cross thing that I really love and I always want to use him like um, I like in my old journal uh, I think there's like phone numbers for things like appointments I had to do and I had to write them down quickly I used to carry <laughs> this is ridiculous I used to carry my sewing book in my handbag and I would take it to pick up the kids from school every day. When we lived further from the school, I had to catch a bus to school to pick them to pick them up every day. Well, pick Lige up because Lily wasn't in school then. So we used to pack up and get on the bus together. And I used to carry that huge book in my handbag. That's probably why I've got shoulder issues today. Um, but I used to write everything in that book random notes, things, reminders. Um, so th this book does not have to just be an art journal. It can be a journal journal. Like if you want to write memories in it, like go ahead. Like there is, this is, this book is your own creation. It's a choose your own adventure art, art wise. And if you want to do scrapbooking in it, you can. If you want to do, you know, watercolors, you can. Um, painting, stamping, anything you want. The possibilities are only endless if you are open to them being endless. If you go, no, I can't do anything because there's not been another video. Well, some days I'm going to be a little bit too busy being a mom. Like the school holidays just finished. I always try every year. Well, that's kind of cute. He's kind of cute there. And put maybe her there. Maybe his head's too big. Do I have a smaller version? I do have a smaller version of him. Maybe I'll try the smaller head. So school holidays. I try every school holidays to make videos. Every school holidays. And it never works. No matter how much I try, no matter what I do, I never end up getting a video done. And so it always looks like I've taken a huge break when in actual fact it's just me being a mom. And my, my minions, my teacup humans, 
are always my first priority. So there will be gaps in the sewing book series and that's okay too because I would hope that you guys would be taking some of the lessons from previous videos like some of the girls have watched my old Nook Dwellers video and have run with that and I never thought that that video would make a research but you guys are putting Nook Dwellers in your journals there's no reason why you can't put a Nook Dweller in your sewing book because my last one it was like a haven for those things and there'll be Nook Dwellers in this one too so take the lessons that I'm giving you from the journal with me, from all my old videos and all my old content and apply it how you want into your journal. Some girls are doing them in the Midori's, some girls are doing them in their sketchbooks, some girls are doing it in their sewing books. And that's that's exactly what I'm, I'm trying. So does the little one look better? <sighs> what? Does it look weird because it's dressed and he's guy? <laughs> I've just realized I'm doing that. What if I put her head in there? But then her arm gets covered. Ah, first world collage problems. Oh no. My nails are getting to the stage where I'm getting into monster status. Maybe I could put her. See, I have no idea how this is gonna look, but you've gotta trial it in order to figure out if it's gonna work or not. See, they look good together. They can be besties. I don't think there is another face I could put on there. I mean, I have this one and this one, but I think they're too little. Let's see. Let's see this one. Let's see if she looks good. See, it's all trial and error. I did not come on here with a plan except to give you guys a creative pep talk. And to say stop stressing the sewing book is meant to be a place of fun a place of relaxation a place to just play and experiment and it's not like an exam it's not like a, if I do this it's going to ruin it yeah you're gonna have ugly pages I'm gonna prepare you for that now there are going to be pages that you look at and be all snarly and sneery and be like that is so ugly believe me I have ugly pages I do I have many 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 ugly pages so, do we want she fit? Oh, get out of the way. She fit in there. Her and her. They can be friends, but I really, I really don't want all me. I would love some Tisha. I like her there. Yeah, I think I like this too. I made a giant mess. So, let's get them onto the page. So as you can see, I have no idea what I'm doing, but I'm just winging it while I talk to you guys. And this is going to be a stupidly long video because I never shut up. So I'm going to get these guys down. Do I want to have her head tilted? Maybe tilted off the side. And then... beauty with glue stick is you've got a little bit of time to move things around before it sticks sticks so beep. put her in here no put her on top and then I like it. I like it. Uh, let's put some. I've noticed that some of the colored images in this book, um, the wet media, as you can see, see it resisting down the bottom. So that means like watercolors and things are going to beat up on this paper. Which isn't a bad thing, of course. It is something to learn from. And I, I don't like it sitting on top, so I've just been um, sort of letting it sink into the paper. Like so. 
and it's not going to sink into that colored bit it's going to resist it so for some of those bits I might collage over them because I don't want a huge patch of green um, especially not that shade of green I'm not a fan of that so I like to push the ink and stuff into the pages a little bit there are some days when I'm going to want a really big punch and that sort of thing um, and I won't mix it in but sometimes I like the look of it being stained instead of sitting on top and then I'm going to not outline it with a brush pen because that's just a bit too much. 0.3. These are my Unipin fine lines. You guys know how much I love these. And that just sort of helps the collage elements look like they're part they're all part of something, like they're all one. And I am going to see I'm rushing when I rush. I make mistakes and I always try and rush on camera so that it's not a hundred thousand minute video. Give them their little collars. And these these pens, 90% of the time, because this one's an old one, it's not working as well, will write over photographs and will behave nicely on photographs. So keep that in mind. I think the Copic ones, where's my carbon pen? Um, I don't think, I think I've packed my carbon pen for my trip. I'm going away to see my mom and dad. So let's give them little collars because everything looks better with a collar. Some pens having a fit because it, and I need a new one. And I will probably go over these with gel pens because they also work really well on um... <sighs> Yes, I'm in my pajamas. You just saw my pajamas. See? Gel pens, man. Sakura Jelly Rolls. Get some. They are amazing. And they are just the right amount of neon for your stuff. I love neon. So I hope that you've enjoyed a little bit of a creative pep talk and seen me sort of meander through parts of this page. I mean, I will probably come back in and add pen work and maybe some stenciling and stuff. Um, but really, I will do elements on pages like this and then I'll leave them and then I'll come back and I'll add something else. And that's how my pages get built. They get built organically. They don't get built one page at a time. So like I was working in here and just adding color and, you know, working, adding color to things and they, they just evolve. And that is how I art journal. I don't do one page at a time because that's too much pressure to start something and finish something. It's too much pressure and I don't do well under pressure at all. So I like to just build things up slowly and you know, you might not um, find something perfect for a page and then six months later you find the perfect thing that'll just make that page pop. Whereas if you were to start that page six months ago and force yourself to finish it, you might not be as happy with the results. And um, that's just how I work though. I know a lot of other people work completely differently. And so that's just me. Slow and steady and patchworky. I like to patchwork my things in. Um, so please don't stress about this series, about your book. Your book is not something to stress about. Your book is, is meant to give you life and something to do on the couch. You can sit down on the couch and just doodle. Like I will sit here and do these little things for hours and I will fill half a page with these and it's real it's relaxing for me so I will probably sit there tonight and just draw all these weird little swirly things because I like how they look 
and it's something that I've done in my journals for a long time or little little stars you see a lot of little stars in my work um, so I want you to just have have fun and enjoy it and if you go oh that'll look good in my sewing book put it in your sewing book don't wait for me to go it's okay I, I am giving this is my permission slip my permission I'm giving you guys permission to just explore your creativity just make collages just paint just draw just do it all in your sewing book and have fun with it I never intended for you guys to have miniature anxiety attacks over a sewing book and I know there's some of you guys that have just ran with this idea and I've seen some amazing pages in the little inkers group amazing and that is just fantastic but I just knew I needed to make a little video for some of the girls that are feeling overwhelmed and I know there's a handful of you and I know this book is overwhelming because it's massive but this is not a race and we are going to take it page after page not even page like half pages bits and pieces at a time bite sizes at a time because that's how I work in bite sizes I like to make things in small chunks and then put it all together and it just happens to work so I may not come back to this page for another six months, but when I do, I know that it'll be the right time, it'll have the right things, because that's just how this book works. I don't know, there's something about the sewing book that I really enjoy, and that it looks all over the place and quirky and mismatched, but I love that. I love journal pages that looked that look as if they're in someone's head because nothing is orderly in my brain and my pages reflect that. <laughs> so, and my work style reflects that. So thank you for taking the time to sit through this. I will see you guys very soon. I will have a journal with me with a brimble box very soon on my channel and also the winners of the giveaway. Thank you so much for joining me. Talk to you soon. Bye things and and practice drawing practice so you don't have to have in your head that your art journal needs to be full of completed artworks and um, full of work, huge works of art I'm a firm believer in um, process process is what it's all about and 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 you can see from the start of your journal to the end of the journal how far you've come um, just by looking at the process and how everything comes together. We're going to work with a lot of bright colours because I like to work with bright colours. Um, so start collecting bits and pieces. I have a little tub of things that I just throw in, um, you know, clipping.